So, hey guys, it is Jacob with another leveling video. I'm leveling Yuga 2 now, the damage over time 1. Uh, just a quick tip before you go for the last boss. What they've added, they've added troves and you can repeat them over and over. And the last trove is great because you can run it and level up to level 60 pretty fast and on level 60 you open your third trait on ev on each character basically so you can use that to boost the damage of your character before you go for the last boss like if you need it you got definitely did not need it but i did it anyway because why not you have to level up somewhere anyway so you can as well do it here as you can see I've just leveled to level 60 and I'm already like 40% and I just started the map. So the XP gain here is really great, just use that before you go to maps. And you also farm decent gear like all these pieces I farmed here pretty much. So yeah, am I missing anything? Not really. Okay. So, you farm some unique pieces as well. That will help you with your de with your character. The build that I used for Yuga, I had no idea what to level him with. So I just sticked to their to their uh, leveling build. I've just changed it slightly. Got more move. Got more attack speed to be able to use like. Uh, what is this called? Spiral strike, like more efficiently or more qu more quickly, and I'm using sp uh, spiral strike to move through the story faster. This character, this character's playtime is like three hours, so I've pretty much completed the story in three hours, which is decent, I think. And yeah, so let's go for the last boss. And then I will show you what I changed in their leveling build. Loading screens back to the location where you killed some monsters are a bit longer, so yeah, you have to like wait through that. Doesn't really matter. Just kill the queen here. My champion. Princess. Once more. So how the build wor wor works, the skill that I have on E, with the supports they have there, like with the self-sacrifice, when you cast it and you are near a boss, it never expires, so basically you can cast it on a boss and stay near the, stay near the boss, and it will never expire on them, and that increases your damage over time. So definitely abuse that. The radiance of the sun. So queen, pretty easy fight, just dodge everything when she spawns eyes, kill one and dodge the other twos and then dodge her like AOE skill. And the last boss here is the dragon. <coughs> oh newborn god, awaken in your scorching bed! Yuka's damage get really high with their leveling build once you get to level where you can pick the second trait here, the reef purification, then the damage like skyrockets basically. Mm 
Pretty straightforward fight. And if you have enough like regeneration, you can just stand in everything she casts. So yeah. Having some HP regeneration on your gear helps. Witness the birth of a new god. And that's it. That's the story done. Now I will go through the build once we get to town. An excellent well. Okay, let's go through it right now. I didn't even take the f I didn't even complete <laughs> the first trade which I was leveling for. Yeah. That's how easy it was with Yuga. So, let's go through the build. Items. I dropped this in the last trove. That allows you to like cast your fire pool twice basically. Um that's pretty much it. Once you start dropping items with energy, just swap all items with the ones that have the most energy and then start gearing over with items that give you more damage basically. And you want more energy just to be able to like slot in more sub more support skills and more support links for your main spell skill basically and use all your auras. That's it. For the skills, they use flame jet in the leveling build. Speed up formation early on the terra charge, later on. Well, yeah, terra charge and additional damage since I did not drop the armor. Uh, ground divide gives you one additional terra charge. Flame jets scales with terra charges as well. Reaping agony. Flame jets deals like secondary damage over time. And Reaping Agony support gives you like the first source or early source of Reap, which Reap basically uh, deals a portion of your damage over time on the target in an instant with this cooldown and the portion of the damage over time it deals instantly is the first number here. And then Control Spell to, ju to just get some additional spell damage. Um, for the movement skill, instead of blink, I chose spire strike. So you want to level or you want to play the entire story with like daggers, uh, sacrificial blades or swords. So for Yuga, he's great in that that he's, he starts dropping sacrificial blades pretty much since the beginning of his like story. So you can use sacrificial blades throughout the game. <clears throat> and you pair that with recklessness which gives you additional attack speed and if you have enough energy for the second link you you put in quick mobility for more attack speed you just move through the maps faster healing skill compound source with residues so it does not drop if it occasionally heals you to full mana ball with self sacrifice uh, gives you additional spell damage and mania to increase its effect even more Cell sacrifice increases its effect as well. And for the last support that they like are uh, recommending you is Star Stalker, which is a projectile that sticks if when it hits a rare, it sticks to it and creates a yellow circle around it. And if you are standing in that circle, you deal additional damage over time. So that's what helps you kill bosses basically. When you link it with the self-sacrifice and you cast it on a boss, when you are near a boss, uh, the Star Stalker never expires, so as long as you are able to survive boss skills or avoid them and still be in that 8 meter radius, you are good and you get like the 63% status effect. Uh, for the auras, <coughs> The first one I was running was Flame Imbue. Uh, then once you get Magical Source and 
if you struggle with mana which you might because you are using mana boil and you don't have much mana re much mana region on your passive skills and and on your passive tree and items and man mana sor magical source like helps with mana region uh, flame imbue elemental amplification once you level up to level 55 you can like get elemental amplification before level 55 I, I was just using corrosion imbue and thunder imbue for more damage uh, deep pain is the same like once you reach level 55 you can get deep pain that's it <coughs> so that's for the skills for the passive tree you got to is damage over time character so you go with the damage over time trees, goddess of deception, generic damage and skill effect duration and what I changed here instead of going for more area I was getting attack speed as soon as possible when, where, when you can get attack speed, get attack speed use your uh, spiral strike to get through maps fast uh, windwalk, some dot damage and Poison relief that helps you with surviving. Like there's nothing else that can help you while leveling in the story because you don't deal erosion damage, you don't have blur, so this is the only one that can help you at least a little bit dur during the story. For psychic for psychic <laughs> for psychic first points attack speed again and then damage, skill effect duration, these points first, these points first, once you can start putting point into this, start putting points into these, before you continue putting points into your like dot damage or skill effect duration or skill area, you want to max these out first, for the large passive points, affliction per second, affliction increases your like uh, damage over time, and uh, reap purification that gives you a, a huge reap since since the flame jet does not like put stacks on the monsters but it it simply deals damage over time secondary damage over time then these reaps are very effective on these kinds of build like flame jet and uh, frost terra for example yeah reap purification a big source of damage and in seal vanguard just get the attack speed as soon as you can that's it um, for the hero traits space-time diversion and the second one just get the second one because that gives you additional damage well this one just gives you skill effect duration <coughs> which you don't really need you just cast your flame jet like every four seconds or so and yeah getting more duration does not like help the build at all in my opinion so yeah get the space time delay here that would be it once you get to level 25 i wasn't using my f skill at all once you get to level 25 the f skill starts using st uh, starts getting used automatically so you don't have to care about that at all <coughs> That's it. Damage after story looks like this. Without the third, like, <coughs> without the different hero trade. So around one mil. It's more than enough to start mapping immediately after you complete the story, so that's great. Could get you to like time mark 5. You will just get better gear. And that will be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will update you with time mark 7 speed farming build or time mark 8 speed farming for you to get levels fast and we will kill this too. 8.4's farming build later on. So thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.